reporting there where we've been joined by Dr Louise Irvin from the National Health Action Party, which supports the march, and by Julia Manning from the 2020 Health Group, which supports the government's NHS reforms. Welcome to both of you. Louise, can I start with you first of all? The NHS is still free at the point of use. Yes. Do you really think the public cares who provides their health care as long as they are not paying for it directly in that sense? Well, the public, for the public it's very important that health remain free at the point of use. However, how health is organised and delivered is also important. And I think if the public knew the amount of um, wastage that there is in the privatised system and the risks, the risks of destabilising NHS care, but also the risks of poor quality care, they would care very much about who provides care. What examples have you got about poor quality care being provided by private providers? Well, um, we had um, Sarah Coe who took over the provision of out-of-hour services in Cornwall and actually um, have lost the contract because of the poor quality they actually were, were um, sent, putting in misleading, I uh, will say misleading um, r reports and results. There's also the two cases recently of, ca of cataract operations which were being done by private providers those contracts being pulled because of poor results. Right. Julia, what do you say to that? Because th there may be an argument that some of the public cares about what happens within the NHS, but many will just want a decent quality of care being provided by whomever, as long as it's still free at the point of use, but not if the care is substandard and dangerous. Well, I think this, this march is a fantastic demonstration of public support and commitment to the NHS, uh, which we absolutely you know, agree with. And we want to see an NHS fit for the future and fit for the 21st century. In terms of the concerns around privatisation, the reality is that the NHS is a partnership between independent providers and the public sector. And actually the figure of the amount of money NHS budget spends in the independent sector, so we're thinking about IT support, we're mm -hmm. thinking about GPs, we're thinking about drugs. So the whole piece is actually about 28% already. It is a partnership and without each other the whole system would fall down. The problem is people worry that's going to grow. People worry that that private sector provision within the NHS will begin to engulf parts of what they feel is a health service that will lose its identity. I don't think it will lose its identity. I think everyone is committed to the same core principles. And what's really important is we recognise the fantastic independent providers. I mean, no one wants to get rid of Macmillan nurses. No one wants to see hospices disappear. No one wants to see whiz kids stop providing wheelchairs to children. There's a, it is a great partnership. We need to celebrate that partnership. Right. Isn't it true that actually the NHS has always been a mixture of public and private providers? And to some extent, what's being said is very emotional, but in reality has always existed. This, this is um, a way of misleading the public, talking about Macmillan Nurses, which is a charity, yes. and talking about GPs who are independent contractors, but very much part so of they the are, NHS. Yes, but we're they are private, not public not, sector. We yes. do not have um, shareholders. We do not draw profit into um, shareholders' pockets. And the problem is that the companies that are taking these contracts are big private equity funds, they're hedge funds, they're people out to make major profit from the NHS and that is a real risk. And the number of contracts that have gone out to the private sector has increased three times in the last year and it's only last year that the regulations came out. Right. The, the percentage of provision, though, since the government um, came to power in 2010 hasn't increased. The Health and Social Care Act was uh, implemented two years ago and the regulations that enforce it was just one year ago. In that one year, we have seen three times the number of contracts being put out to tender to the oh, private sector. Where I'm with Louise is that I think there should be a profit cap. We used to have that right. for medicines and for pharmaceutical companies supplying to the NHS. They shouldn't be allowed to make unbridled profits. But some so of that you profit... do admit that it is a dangerous precedent to allow companies to focus more on profit than it is on the care they're providing. I think that any company that doesn't focus on the care they're providing shouldn't be but, providing services to the NHS. Right, but how on earth do you stop that? I mean, the problem here, Duncan Barts, is um, it's quite difficult to unravel what oh, is going on within the NHS. It's remarkably complex. But for the public, they may yeah. be very worried about what's yeah. happening and, and, and what they see is happening with the NHS. Yeah, there's a responsibility, actually, on, on both your parts, and, and the language is so important, because when you use the P word, which is toxic privatisation, people phone me up on the radio show and think we're going to end up like the American system where mm. you can't have any treatment unless you get your credit card or mm. checkbook out and it scares people so mm. I think to be honest with you both of you in this debate you, you've got to be very clear what your concerns are because the word mm. privatization can be misused and abused I also think very quickly there is a point here that the majority of patients you know this is the battle you have don't really care where their care comes from as long as they get first-class care 
Do you accept privatisation in the way people understand it is not what's happening here? No, I don't. In fact, by the definition of the World Health Organisation and indeed by Oliver Letwin, who wrote a book called Privatising the World, when public services are put over to the private sector to provide, that is privatisation. And it's interesting, the government does not want to use the P word because it knows it's toxic. It knows that the population do not want privatisation. Final word to you, Julie. What the debate needs to be about is how we fund the NHS in the future, what the services are that the NHS provided. Yeah provides because it can't do everything it can't do you know it, it, it raises our expectations about what is possible we need that public debate that needs to be also about the inequity that's increasing you know you can have one treatment in one place and not in another that's what we need to be debating I'm going to leave it there thank you both very much thank you